Through our indigenous environmental network, we've been uh, throughout the world talking to our indigenous brothers and sisters. And uh, in Alaska, you know, with the melting of the permafrost, with the temperatures warming, uh, and the uh, melting of the sea ice that has completely devastated their ecosystem to where, you know, we have certain knowledges that we're able to adapt, but we should not be put into a position of forced adaptation or forced change. And, uh, you know, I see firsthand the effects of uh, the environment. Uh, when land territories are being eroded away from the melting sea ice and the oceans coming in, uh, to where you have to relocate your whole village. And it's not as easy as it was like 100 years ago or 200, 300 years ago, because there has been the settlement of immigrants who have come in from Europe, for an example, to my territories, and they have other land where they're living, so an indigenous village just can't lift up and move to another location. There are other populations living there now. Uh, I'm hearing that uh, they're really concerned in the small island states with the rising sea levels, and that's going to escalate. That's already predicted. You know, where did these large populations of indigenous peoples from the Pacific, where did they move to? That's a very uh, uh, big issue that involves uh, a political decision. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're seeing more floods and more hurricanes and more droughts where people are being forced to relocate, people are being forced to relocate and then resettle in other areas. It's not like it was uh, 500 years ago. I mean, you know, it's hard to pick up a whole uh, village of people and move to another area without it getting political. So these are issues that we're very concerned about and the right to practice our culture. Where I come from, you know, we have certain plants and certain uh, uh, natural materials that are no longer available. We have to go, you know, two days travel, or even one day travel to go get these materials. Uh, with the moose uh, population, which is one of our animals that uh, sustains our people, uh, are moving north because of the temperature warming. So uh, a lot of the uh, habitat that we depend on for subsistence isn't there anymore. In Alaska, in remote areas, they don't have a grocery store to go to. Uh, they depend on the environment. So when the environment and the ecosystem and, hap and the habitat is being affected by climate change to where they may perish, that affects our indigenous people and becomes a food sovereignty issue, a food security issue. In Africa, I was really alarmed at the, at the concerns with the water and water rights and the uh, possible uh, war around water. You know, if the, if the predictions uh, here in Africa are true, there's going to be less water because of a changing climate, because of uh, global warming. And that's why it's, it's going to be a, a form of uh, life and death. And we're telling the world leaders now that if they don't take action, that there will be, you know, there will be deaths of indigenous peoples. And we're even seeing that affecting non-indigenous peoples in Europe, where there are warming events, who have, which has devastated uh, whole populations of people, especially our elders in these heat islands and in the cities. Uh, you know, where there's uh, surges and blackouts and electricity when everyone's turning on their air conditioners in New York City and because of the heat wave that's coming through and, uh, and uh, you know, and the most vulnerable, the people who have poor health, our elders are affected by that. So it's affecting all people. Uh, and uh, I th again, the most vulnerable are those people in those remote areas uh, of the world that depend on food system, natural systems. Uh, and, and, you know, we're already fighting for our water rights in different parts of the world. But when now we're having to compete for water with other populations, and uh, that's, that's why we wonder why the United Nations uh, is hesitating from recognizing water as a human right. You know, uh, so food security, the price of food may be going up the, as the price of oil goes up. So who's going to be able to uh, uh, provide food for their families in the future? And, uh, you know, if we uh, have this negative effect with the loss of uh, 
of animal species and fish. We're already uh, depleting the fish in the oceans. Uh, and, you know, so our forecast as indigenous people is that, yes, we will survive, uh, but, but uh, we shouldn't have to go through all these difficulties uh, as well as all people of the world. We should not be put in that position. And that's why we're here to, to lift up our voice, telling these world leaders to make a commitment to our second round of the Kyoto Protocol because that's the only international legally binding agreement that uh, will hold the polluters accountable. And let's wait till another day then for the economies in transition to make a commitment. You know, they need funding to, uh, to help them to make that transition. A lot of the industrialized countries are in a better position. And uh, so this is a climate equity issue and a climate debt issue. You know, so there's layers of these issues that we, we need to, 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 to uh, be tuned into. Um, and we'll do everything we can here to make this uh, a strong uh, COP17. Uh, but uh, one of the negotiators this morning that met with our indigenous peoples in our caucus said this is uh, going to be a lifetime venture. You know, the commitments to mitigate climate change and to adapt uh, is going to be a lifetime uh, commitment and that we should start training our, our, our youth, our children, because they're going to have to pick up the responsibilities uh, in 2050 when that uh, review of whether or not we have achieved 40%, uh, 50%, 100% reduction uh, 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 in, in, in admissions uh, targets. Uh, it's the youth who are here now that will be elders. They're going to be in their 60s and they're going to say whether or not the results of these, these COP decisions were successful or not. I hope it is.